This guy has a long hair growing out of his eye. He tried to pull it out, but it didn't work. Eventually, he noticed that hair was growing on his tongue as well. It was very thick and hard to shave off. <laughs> the story's main character is Teddy, a slightly eccentric guy from the French countryside. There, the local population is terrorized by a mystical wolf that sneaks into the suburbs at night and kills livestock. The enraged residents decide to start hunting the wolf. The boy watches a monument unveiling honoring World War II's victims. When the names of the fallen heroes are read, Teddy is outraged at the mistake made in his grandfather's name and rushes to the monument. Police commissioners pull him away from the memorial but don't punish him for disturbing the peace. Locals have long been accustomed to his strange behavior. Later that day, Teddy arrives in a field, where he likes to spend time alone and think about the future. But today, his communion with nature is disrupted by another animal corpse, whose mangled carcass was found by local farmers. He gets closer to the crime scene and tries to ask the police what is happening, but they ignore his questions. In the distance, he notices something running away deep into the woods. In the evening, Teddy returns home to his aunt and uncle Papan, who are sick and have replaced his parents. After spending time with his relatives, the boy starts to get ready for work at a massage parlor, but he is distracted by strange sounds from behind the trees near the house. The sounds seem to be getting closer and closer, reminding him of a wolf howling. Teddy decides to find out what it is all about and, armed with rebar, disappears into the thick of the trees. After a while, he returns, limping and holding his back, which is bleeding. Despite what happened, Teddy makes it to work. There he massages customers and, without much desire, fulfills their special requests. At the end of his shift, Teddy's boss, Jasseline, gives him a massage to relieve his stress. The woman tries by all means to seduce her subordinate, but he calls her advances molestation. Then the supervisor decides to kiss him forcefully and piles her whole body on top of him. Teddy pushes her away from him and jumps off the massage table, where he leaves behind bloodstains. At home, Teddy's uncle examines and treats his wounds and pulls a piece of a fang out of his back. Frightened by what he sees, Papan rushes to close all the windows and doors in the house. The next day, Teddy and his uncle go to write an assault report to the police. But Teddy cannot describe his attacker because he could not see him in the dark. Papan shows the fang he pulled out of his nephew's body and tells the commissioner that it might be a werewolf fang. The lawman smiles wryly at this statement. He assures him that it's just a dog's fang and asks him not to spread ridiculous rumors around town. Teddy asks his uncle to stop making up stories because their family is already considered weird. In the middle of the night, Teddy rushes out of bed and goes to the refrigerator. Finding nothing to satisfy his hunger, he goes into his aunt's room. He looks at the woman's leg with lust, then bites off a piece of her toe. It turns out to be just a dream, and the toe remains in place. But the weirdness in the dream is replaced by Teddy's unusual behavior in real life. Papan decides to repair his father's old gun and begins to watch Teddy suspiciously. His uncle notices that his nephew looks tired, smells terrible, and eats meat for breakfast instead of his usual cereal. The boy tells his uncle that he has completely lost his mind. Teddy arrives at his girlfriend Rebecca's house. They are left alone, stoned on hallucinogenic mushrooms, and dance to somber rock. Afterward, she asks him to pleasure her. In the process, Teddy hurts Rebecca, and she asks him to stop. He runs off, saying he doesn't feel well. Already at home, Teddy examines his tongue in the mirror and is horrified to notice hair growing on it. Unable to think of a better solution, he shaves off the stubble on his tongue with a razor. The next day Teddy goes to the doctor. He tells the doctor that hair has started growing on his tongue and that he has shaved it off. The doctor is suspicious and asks if he has been using drugs, and he confesses that he ate mushrooms last night. Teddy takes Rebecca to his favorite place, where he tells her about his plans for the future and the house he wants to build for the two of them. He sincerely believes he has a bright future with her and promises to make his dream a reality. Rebecca smiles indulgently as if listening to the child's fantasies. She changes the subject by inviting him to a party her classmates are throwing before their final exams. A man approaches Teddy and asks him to hang posters on the salon's windows, calling for a hunt for the beast that attacks livestock. At some point, Teddy begins to behave strangely again and, as if under hypnosis, leaves work and goes into the woods, where he gnaws the bones of someone's pet. In the morning, Teddy wakes up completely naked in the square near the Monument of Fallen Heroes. He runs home, where Papan meets him with a loaded gun. He lies to his uncle and tells him that he was attacked in the parking lot, stripped and covered in mud. Papan doesn't believe his nephew and then confesses that he doesn't remember what happened to him last night. In the evening, Teddy arrives at Rebecca's party and rehearses in advance how he will introduce himself to her friends and give inspirational words to future graduates. To get them to like him, he takes a case of alcohol with him. But instead of Teddy, Rebecca's close friend Benjamin gives the pep talk. In his monologue, he mentions Rebecca and predicts her career as the president, which is very flattering to her. The speech makes the company ecstatic, and everyone rushes to hug him, leaving Teddy to stand alone behind him. During the party, 
Benjamin approaches Teddy and tries to find out how he got into his house. Teddy says he was invited by his girlfriend Rebecca, to who Benjamin is also attracted. The guys start insulting each other, then go from harsh words to fighting. After everything, Teddy smashes a crate of liquor and leaves the party, leaving Rebecca alone. At work, as night falls, Teddy feels sick again. His body feels like it's on fire, and to somehow cool himself down, he goes down to the basement and locks himself in the freezer. But something goes wrong, and he falls back into an uncontrollable state. Later, he is called by Jasseline, asking him to give her a massage. He does not refuse her advances this time and pounces on her like a beast. During the love games, he bites her and plays with her tongue until he decides to bite it off completely. In pain, she faints and collapses on the massage table, and Teddy escapes again. He wakes up in his bathtub filled with blood. Unaware of what is happening, Teddy rinses the blood off himself in a hurry. In the mirror, he notices hair growing in his eye and tries to pull it out with tweezers. Finally, he believes his uncle's stories and finds more information about the effects of a werewolf bite on the internet. His fears are confirmed. During the lunar cycle, as night falls, the cursed man's body begins to change, and a lust for the hunt overcomes him. After being bitten by an unknown beast, the same thing happens to Teddy. The commissioner comes to their house. He tells Teddy that they managed to save Jasseline, but she has fallen into a coma because of the significant loss of blood. Since Teddy was the only one with her last night, he becomes the prime suspect in the crime. But he can't remember anything from that night, so the commissioner walks away with nothing. Teddy sneaks into Rebecca's house, getting ready for a school night. She is unhappy to see him and dismissively answers all his questions. Rebecca is sure he had something to do with what happened to Jasseline, after all, the whole town is already talking about it. He tries to break the ice between them and speaks of the future. He tells Rebecca that he will make a lot of money and they can have a few children. She says she has no intention of moving back to the suburbs after college and asks Teddy not to get attached to her. Rebecca admits that she's fallen out of love with him and doesn't see a future with him. According to her, Teddy is stuck in a state of being a naive child, and she has matured and changed. Teddy can't believe his ears, as everything he held dear has begun to crumble before his eyes. He begs Rebecca to change her mind and promises to change and find a good job, but she is adamant. Teddy grabs her by the legs and tries to take her away with him, but Rebecca's parents stop him. Shattered by his breakup, he hurts himself again, pulling off a fingernail where hair is growing. He returns home to his uncle, who draws a big red cross on the wall of his room. They perform a cleansing ritual, and that night Teddy sleeps peacefully. A new day arrives. Teddy decides to write Rebecca a letter of apology in which he confesses his feelings. He sneaks into her backyard and wants to leave the note on her windowsill discreetly. Rebecca is in her room, getting ready for a school night. For a while, Teddy watches her lovingly, until Benjamin walks into her room half-naked, and they start making love. Teddy realizes that he has been betrayed, and Rebecca has rejected him because she has been cheating on him with Benjamin all along. Screaming in inner pain, Teddy escapes to his favorite place, where he had recently told Rebecca about their happy future. There, he sees the locals kill the beast that has terrorized them for months. At the school party, almost the entire town gathers. The students sing a farewell song, and a game of bingo begins. The people play carelessly and have fun, not realizing that a new beast is preparing to hunt in the school bathroom. A full moon arrives, and Teddy loses his human form, turning into a beast. The new werewolf turns off the lights in the auditorium and kills his first victim. The townspeople panic and flee in different directions, but Teddy follows them everywhere. Rebecca and Benjamin manage to hide. They try to call the police, but there is almost no reception. Rebecca finally hears the commissioner's voice on the phone and tries to explain what is going on, but the man can't hear her well. Then Teddy grabs Benjamin and kills him. Rebecca is then the next victim. Morning comes. The police sneak into the school and see the result of the bloodbath. Mutilated bodies lie everywhere, like the flock of sheep they previously found dead in the fields. Teddy wakes up in the river. The police and the locals pursue him, but he manages to escape. He returns home to his uncle and aunt. Papon asks no questions and silently pours him cereal for breakfast. Meanwhile, an angry mob gathers outside their house and wants to kill Teddy, the new beast bringing havoc to their quiet little town. He picks up a shotgun and leads Teddy into the hallway, aiming at where the locals are about to rush in. The crowd tries to make their way through the cops to the second floor, but at that moment, a gunshot sounds. Papon kills Teddy. The commissioner pats the man on the shoulder encouragingly, telling him over the radio that the problem has been solved. Papon rushes to his dead nephew in tears and hugs him. At the end of the movie, we see Rebecca standing in front of Teddy's house. She has a bloody claw mark on her back, and she, too, is destined to become a werewolf. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comments which movie you want to see next. See you next time.